This video will show you how to use the Motion Match feature of the TI Inspire calculator using the CBR2. If you're not familiar with the CBR2 motion sensor, please watch our previous video which was entitled TI Inspire Getting Started with the CBR2. That will get you familiar with all the features of the motion sensor and how to hook it up and use it with the calculator. Once you're comfortable with that, this video will then take you into using the Motion Match feature. So once we have our TI Inspire calculator, in order to access and use the Motion Match feature, we're going to connect our CBR2. And that will launch the DataQuest app. You'll hear the clicking sound indicating that the CBR2 motion sensor is working. Now you'll notice here that I have my meter view, which is showing me the distance away from the motion sensor. Um, I have the play or record button. I can set time, rate, and duration for my experiment. But you'll notice here, there's no graph yet for me to work with. The first thing we're gonna do is click on menu, and then come over here to view, graph, and now I have the graph option. But I have two options. One is position, and one is velocity. If I just want to work with the position graph, I want to be able to just see one graph at a time. So I'm going to click on Menu. I'm going to click on Graph, Show Graph, and Graph 1. Now I have just one graph to work with. When students are working with the graph, please have them take a look at the values on the x-axis that we're looking at time in seconds for a total of five seconds indicating that each one of our grid lines is worth one second of time. Also looking at the y-axis, our default or standard is going to give our position in meters up to two meters away. We want students to understand that this is position from the motion sensor and that this is the time or duration of our movement. So the next thing we're going to be able to do is access the motion match. We'll come back to menu now I have an option here, line 4, Analyze. I didn't have that option previously until I enabled the graph view. So now I come to Analyze. While it's useful for analyzing data, we also have Motion Match down here at the bottom. I'm going to select a new position match, and it will generate a graph for me to try to replicate. Now, when you take a look at this graph, if you don't want to work with that graph, maybe you need to differentiate for your students, you want to start or make a different point, you simply come back to Menu, Analyze, Motion Match, and get a new position match. I've selected a graph that I'm going to try to replicate. The first thing students need to do is to make sure they know their starting position. So if I look at my y-axis between 0 and 2 meters, I need to start a little over 1 meter away from the wall. Now in order to get the start position, I can watch the meter view over here and just see when I get to approximately the correct start position. All right, let's say I'm pretty close to thinking I might be in about the right start position. I'm going to click the Start Collection button and then move and try to replicate this graph. Well, that's not bad for a first attempt. So I can choose now to save the graph or if I wanted to try to redo the graph, I could just click on the play button. It would delete the first set of data and allow me to overwrite. So I'm going to actually save this graph. And it was stored as run one. So if I come back and click on run one, I can see the blue line with my graph. Now if I take a look at wanting to run run two, I'm going to again set up my start position, click on the start arrow, and now my second run is stored as a black line with diamond. 
So now I can look at the two data sets and say, you know what, I'm pretty satisfied that I've been able to replicate that graph. So I'm going to save run two. And in order now to save all of my data, we'll take that next step. By clicking all, I can see all of my runs. Let's say that I just want to keep run two. I want to delete run one, delete run one, OK. And now I'm left with just run two. Again, it's popped me back to two graphs. If I click on menu, graph, show graph, graph one, brings me back to just my position graph. When I selected run two, the um, computer actually did auto scale to make a better representation of my data. If I want to change that, I can come to menu, graph, and now I'm able to put a title on the graph or to work with my um, X and Y axis here in the window settings. I'm going to come back to window settings and I'm going to change my Y back to zero and two. And that will reset my graph the way uh, I originally took the data. The other thing is if I wanted to just give this graph a title, I could come to menu, graph, graph the title, and I could call it um, experiment number one. Make sure it's enabled and then hit OK. Now when I go to save this, it will save as experiment number one. So the next step is to be able to now save this graph. So I'm going to close. Do you want to save unsaved document? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to call it Kathy's experiment number one. I'm going to save it in my documents. And now if I come to my documents on my calculator, I look in my documents and I scroll down, there's Kathy's experiment number one. And when I open it, here is my graph with the graph title that I gave it experiment number one. Also in the black bar indicating Kathy's experiment number one. Another feature that we can use with the CBR2 is called the drawing graph or drawing a prediction. If I connect to CBR2, it will start my data quest. Remember that I have to go menu, view, graph. Once I get the graph, I want to just look at position. I'm going to go menu, graph, show graph, graph one. And now I have my position versus time graph. If I come back to menu, now I have the option to analyze. When I click analyze down here at the bottom, I can draw prediction, draw. This allows me to um, actually have a virtual pencil that will draw a line and allow me to draw a graph that I would then want students to replicate. The other thing with this is that you can have a story and then ask the students to draw the graph that goes with the story. So I can close that out, reconnect my motion sensor. So if I said to the students, I want you to draw a graph that shows a truck traveling um, at a very high rate of speed, suddenly coming into a stoplight, waiting for one second, and then accelerating slowly. So the students would then have to draw, draw something accelerating quickly, waiting for two seconds at a stoplight, and then accelerating slowly. So I hope that you have fun. Have fun with the motion match feature and look at our next two videos which show you some lab activities that you can do in classroom using the motion sensor.